Amen, amen. Uh, thank you very much. You actually, while you stay, if you can stand, uh, let us read together God's word uh, from Luke chapter 17, 11 to 19. We're going to take our time and read it as if it was for the first time. Well, amen. 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 Luke 17, 11 to 19. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go, shew yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? They are not found that we turn to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto them, turn to him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. May the Lord bless this portion of his word for our edification. Thank you. You may be seated. This song before last we, uh, we worship God with, uh, let all the earth praise him. Well. And I was just thinking, you don't praise him because he actually just did something for you. Well. You don't praise him because you feel like praising him. Oh. Don't you feel sometimes... You cannot even pray because of your short well, shortcoming. Yes, sir. Some of us may be in the sanctuary, you we feel unworthy to praise him. No, no it says praise him. Let all the earth yeah. praise praise him. You don't praise him even for what he does for you. You praise him because he deserves all praise. Yes. Amen. So every time we feel like, well, I want I wish I could worship him praise him like Pastor Lee is doing. You better do that. Put everything aside well, and let him be praised. Yes, so uh, this morning we're talking about gratitude. Gratitude of a Christian. Christian's gratitude. And that's uh, what this chapter is all about. But first, I words have meanings. You know that, right? Yes. And sometimes I want to make sure when I say a word, I match it with its proper meanings, and I like the dictionary a lot, especially English is not my first lang lang language, so I usually, the main words, I like to look for them. So I look for gratitude. Uh, we have the meaning of gratitude, uh, that the context I want to get. It's, a, it's the quality of being thankful. Well. The quality of being thankful. Well, well, well. It is the readiness to show appreciation for kindness. Mm. It is the readiness to return kindness. Woo! Oh, whoa. So when we're talking about gratitude of a Christian, is the quality of the Christian of being thankful? Mm. It's the readiness of the Christian to show appreciation. And it's the quality of the readiness of the Christian to return kindness. Is it a good quality to have? Yes. You mean it? Yes. Have you ever met someone without this quality? Yes. yes. Have you met anybody? You say thank you, you say whatever, do whatever, and they look at you like, they didn't hear, hear you. How do you feel when you just say good morning to someone and they look at you and just ignore you? 
How do you feel? Well, How do you feel when you do something for someone and you really went probably out of your way to do it and it seems like they don't even see it? How do you feel? Well, the Bible says we are created in what image? The same way you feel, God feels the same way. Well, yeah. Imagine when God, you know, he created everything he created. And instead of worshiping him, his creation, they're worshiping. Instead of the creator, they're worshiping the creation. How do you feel? Those of us who have children, and let's pray it doesn't happen to you. You raise them. You do everything you know how to. But at the end, you feel like, I mean, they tell you they don't like you, actually. And the way they behave, they just don't appreciate anything you do. And this is a hard thing. It's the same way the Lord feels. Okay? Now, in some instances, thanks are not necessary. Like being thankful is not necessary. Like let's say uh, you, you loan someone some money, for example. When you give the money, the person receiving the money should thank you, right? Yeah. But giving the money back to you, yeah, you say thank you, but you don't have to. It's something they're giving back to you, right? Your paycheck. Or it's okay to tell your boss thank you for the paycheck, but you work for it. <laughs> I mean, do you every time you get a paycheck, send a card, thank you card for your boss? No. You know? So it's the same way a servant. If you are a servant, like we call a slave, the master doesn't have to thank you. That's your job you're doing. That's just the way it works. That's why even in that same chapter, Luke 17, Jesus said, after the servant uh, came from working hard in the field, yes, and then instead of coming, just taking it easy, uh, he, he would have to go and serve the master food, and then... Yes, sir. After all that, he just did what he was supposed to do. That's right. it. Right. Do we think God has to thank us for anything? He owes us nothing. When we serve him, we serve him because we owe him everything. Amen. Jesus addresses uh, this ingratitude in this chapter we just read from verse 11. And it came to pass, he, Jesus, went to Jerusalem. He passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a village, there met him ten men. They were lepers. And they stood afar off because by law they could not they were supposed to be a certain distance. That's right. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. That's the first thing we're going to see. A cry for help. A cry for help. They were lepers. Now, I also look for what that means being a leper. We have the definition too for you. Uh, today, it's known as Henson's disease. This is what it is. It's caused, it is caused by slow growing bacteria. It can affect the nerve, skin, eyes, and lining of the nose. In some cases, body parts may lose their sense of touch and pain, increasing the likelihood of injuries such as cut and burn. The bacteria that cause the disease attacks the nerves of the fingers and toes, causing them to become 
No. Injuries like burns and ulcers and cuts and unknown parts can go unnoticed, which may lead to permanent damage or infection causing loss of body parts. Well, Does that sound ser serious? Yes, sir. Obviously, to today, it's not really as serious as it was because it's a very curable disease now, okay? But back then, it was a big deal. Yeah. Not only it was a big deal as far as there were not any cure for, for it, but also it was considered as a curse. If you have it, that's because you sin and the curse fell upon you. Okay, so there wasn't anything left for you really except for cry for mercy. You had nothing at your disposal, nothing. Actually, the regulation by law, you know, the priests were supposed to examine the you know, if you have anything in your skin to determine what it was, and if they determine it was leprosy, this is how they dealt with it in Leviticus chapter 13, verses 44 to 46. This is how they dealt with you when they determine you have it. After they determine you have it, you are a leprous man. Verse 44. He is unclean. The priest shall pronounce him utterly unclean. His plague is in his head. 45. And the leper in whom the plague is, his clothes shall be rent, and his head bare, that's been uncovered and he shall put a covering upon his upper lip and he shall cry unclean, unclean. Because he has to let everybody know an unclean person is around. Verse 46, all the days wherein the plague shall be in him, he shall be defiled. He is unclean, he shall dwell alone outside the camp shall his habitation be. Does it sound cruel, harsh? What if it's your husband, your wife, your children? Did we, ex is it, it was too far away we experienced with COVID-19, you remember? If only we go back just a little bit, remember what it looks like. That was rough. But yet by law, they had to do it because that was their way to, to keep the disease from spreading everywhere. Okay? By law, they constantly had to remind themselves who they were. And they constantly had to remind everybody that they were unclean. It was constantly a pain, and while they were decaying. And like we just read, they had to live outside the camp. They were not part of the society. They had to be together. And then they had their own colony. And uh, when I read that, it reminded me of even on my time. I was born under the dictatorship, Papa Doc in Haiti. When officials are coming to visit Haiti, obviously they have to come to the capital, to, white, to the White House. But you have homeless everywhere in the streets. And they don't want or the president or the official, or officials to come and see all those poor people around. They have big trucks taking them and send them to this island close by. Wow. 
with taking the mind they will bring him back after. You know what happened. Once they take him there, they don't come back to take him back. And I, I don't know if Kirk went with us, but I know Carl Paulson, Pastor Thomas, we went to that island. We did have, the, have a church there. So you ended up having this island filled with homeless and poor people, and they abandoned them inside there. And this island is still known like, you know, they consider it as where ignorant and, uh, you know, uh, people live. Wow. And that's what happened. Pretty much once you have leprosy, you out of the camp and pretty much forgotten because no one will come close to you and you're not allowed to come to pe people. So it was a real thing. And uh, some way, somehow they heard about Jesus. Remember, they had no hope, nothing. But they heard about Jesus because Jesus healed leprosy. And uh, they heard about him. But they don't know how to get him, how to find him. And like we said, we just read, Jesus was passing by. That was their opportunity, those ten. And they sincerely cried, Master. And when they say Master, they, they already claim Jesus as their Lord. Their overseer. The one who is able to do anything. And the Bible says, really, they cried in unison. I mean, I don't think one of them just cried and the other, no, I, they just, they were yelling because while he was passing by, they had to, Nazira talk about opportunity. Opportunity comes and goes. That's our opportunity. We have to cry as loud as we can. Amen. Amen. Legally, they were supposed to be crying unclean, unclean. That's what they were supposed to be crying for. But this time, they were crying, have mercy, have compassion on us. They came to the end of themselves. And we're going to read the response. Verse 14, and when Jesus saw them, he said unto them, go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Show yourself to the priest because the priest were the one to tell you you're sick. The priest also is the one to tell you you're healed. You're not free because you feel you're here to go back. Isn't it the way it was for COVID-19? You are tested positive. Before you go back, you have to go back and make sure the tests you do. Yes, you know, that's, that's, that's what happened. Because they were the public health officials. And I want you to see this. And it, it hit me when I saw, saw this. Jesus didn't tell them like all the instances to go wash themselves in the Jordan River. He didn't tell them to go wash themselves in the, in the pool. He just said, go. And this reminds me that Jesus doesn't have one way of doing things. Whoa, yes, sir. And sometimes we truly, truly try to limit him in our little mind thinking, well, sorry, that's the only way he can do it. No. He is able to do whatever, whenever, however. Okay? That's why, because we saw he did something one way, we cannot say, well, that's the only way he's going to do things. Okay? When he told them to go show themselves, Do you think they said, well, uh, you know, if we go and we're not here, they're going to send us back. Why don't you heal us first, right? And then we're going before we start walking clean us. But Jesus would say, no, that's not the way it works. You walk first and then I heal you. 
Unfortunately, that's the way it works in, in God. Uh, we walk by faith, right? Yes, not by? Yes, not by sight. No, this is the Christian's life. Sometimes we will, uh, God, I will do this, if this, if that. No, God doesn't work like that. If you know you're serving him and you know who he is, he wants you to go by faith. Come on, yes, sir. Not by sight. Yes. And the, the, their cure met them in the way of their obedience. Not like you us to picture this. There are ten of them going. Obviously, they expected something to happen. I don't know if they were made cleansed just at once, or if it was all sudden, they saw their nose are coming, their feelings are coming. I don't know, but whether it was suddenly or a little bit at a time, can you feel the excitement? Can you feel the joy like they say, wow, it's, it's happening. Yeah, yeah. We're going back to our family, to our normal life. It was joy. Yeah. And all of a sudden, they saw themselves here. In verse 15, one of them when he saw that he was healed, turned back. And with a loud voice, he glorified God. And he fell down on his face at his feet, Jesus' feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. Now, by the scripture we're reading here, you remember we just talked about the feeling of joy that happened, but when it finally happened, only one came back. Only one. Now we can talk more about that. We don't know if the other one came back after, but only one came back. It's safe to say there were Jews among them too, right? Isn't that safe? Amen. Yeah. But we know this one who came back being a Samaritan probably was the most despised Amen. among them all. Amen. Because not only he shared the condition, but also because he was a, a Samaritan, he was considered less in the religious world. I want to share something with you that it's, it's not funny, but it's real. Uh, uh, Kirk and I, we went to Sri Lanka, and then uh, we were at the airport. Everything is done, and the police were, you know, just there, and Kirk and I are working, and they stopped me, they let Kirk go. And I, I said, okay, well, what's going on here? Okay, and uh, uh, that's just the way it works. Amen. In countries like this, Amen. we call them white. Like Kirk is, Kirk is blanc. Okay, Kirk is a blanc, no problem. But I am the black guy. The blanc can go, no problem. Well. Okay, so now a couple of weeks ago, we were in Dominican Republic. <laughs> Pastor Taylor and I and Pastor Lynch. And uh, I did my reservation for a hotel and everything. And I, w I came in to check in. The guy wouldn't talk to me. He wouldn't talk to me. He would, he would go past the lunch to, to, and I me to, to translate for past the lunch. And past the lunch has no idea, but he, he, no, he won't talk to me. He would talk to past the lunch. On our way from the Dominican Republic, we three were together. We have our passport. 
It's American passport, right? Yeah. But mine has a big H in it as Haitian. That's, that's a flag right there. And they let those guys go. They held me back. And I had to go to that special case. And then that made me feel that's what the Samaritan was. So they were, yeah, normal, everything, but something else. That's just the way it works. So they were considered less even because they were uh, mixed. They were not pure Jew, Jews. And so it was very desperate for this guy so the Bible says, he who receives more, more to him, more is forgiven. He loves more. Wow. Wow. It's like the Jews will take it for granted. But this guy, he didn't deserve it. He felt like he had to go back. And that's meant a lot for Luke to say he was a Samaritan. Those lepers, they were united as one to cry for mercy because they shared the same thing. But only one came back. Like I said, maybe they decided to go to the priest first because that's what Jesus told them to do. Maybe after that they go home and visit friends, but they still came back. We don't know. But the scripture doesn't say anything about it. We can speculate. But we see the reaction that one person did. It was natural, yes. instant, noisy. I mean, just boom. I think that's what God is expecting from us. Because when we go next verse 17 and 18, Jesus answering said, when this guy came to give God thanks, were there not ten cleans? But where are the nine? They are not found that we turn to give glory to God, save this stranger. Doesn't that mean Jesus like somehow expecting them all to come back? Well, well, we may say, well, who knows if they did, were not, they didn't glorify God, say hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. No, Jesus expected them to come back physically. Oh, we, we glorify God in our hearts. We praise him in our hearts. In wow. No, he wow. wants you to come back and make noise and wow. let everybody see it. Well, 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 yes, sir. Where are the nine? Jesus knew where they were. He didn't ask the question like asking him, can you tell me where they were? Jesus knew. There were nine people who had their need met for their own flesh. And they were happy and satisfied about it. They get healed and they're gone. Go resume life. But they were ignorant of the ability of Christ to heal not only the flesh, but also to heal the spirit, the soul, to give hope. Nothing wrong to ask for miracles, for healing. Amen. Eugene was healed, but I guarantee you, well, 60 or plus more years, Eugene may not be around to testify in the flesh, whether by the same disease or something else. Uh, I hope Eugene lives 60 more years, but most likely not 100 more, because it's temporary. It's not going to last forever. It's something just to make you happy and to glorify, but eventually Lazarus, Jesus was from the dead. I don't think he's around, is he? No. no. All the people, he opened their eyes and whatever, they're not around, they're gone. So 
So, verse 19, Jesus told the men, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. You know, it's harder to change somebody's personality than to change their skin. You can go have whatever surgery we want to get and change yourself, however you want. But your personality? 90% of people want new skin, new hair, new good health, and whatever it is. But don't we need spiritual cue as well? well yes, sir. Then to be made whole, you don't just need the physical healing, you need that spiritual healing. When Jesus said, thy faith has made thee whole, it means your faith saved you. You are saved, you are complete, you're not half. Those who, who get the healing physical, Yes, they benefit from, from, from it, but they're not saved because they received it. You're not saved because you are risen from the dead. Wow. You're saved because after you are blessed from risen from the dead, you accept Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, this guy came back. Did he come back to get something more? Why did he come back for? He come back just to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. And what you did for me, no one else, even my family could not do it. And that's all I'm here for. But by doing so, he receives something far greater. <laughs> far greater. Doesn't the Bible say if you faithful in small? In little things. Yes. I remember Nathanael, I think. Yeah. When Jesus told him, I saw you. Yes. And he said, Lord and Savior. And Jesus said, Well, because I just told you, I saw you, you believe. You will see even greater things. Greater things. So if you praise God, you thank him for the little things, you will be amazed how much more he has for you. It, it's like uh, uh, if you have children or brothers and sisters or neighbor or whatever, you help out, and one of them would come constantly, send you flowers, say thank you. I mean, just appreciate what you do. Doesn't that make you feel you want to do more for it? And you do it with joy and gladness. You're happy to do it. Well. And then they'll go around and tell everybody what you did. How do you feel? So when God does things for us, well. he wants us not only to be thankful, but how much more when he says, we're going everywhere telling people what he did for you. Amen. So, Miracles do not guarantee change in people. The change is only of their situation, right? I have a friend of the, the fam family who went through, his wife went to heart implant. But you know, the same way women talk about their husband husbands also talk about their wives, you know, how the wife does, how the wife does, and the wife would talk about, oh, my husband this, my husband that. You know how it goes, right? Well, you don't know how it goes? Yeah, yeah we... <laughs> well, Pastor Lee, you are new in the club. Maybe you don't know yet, but... <laughs> oh, my husband this, my husband that. So, I was talking to the friend I told him, well, uh, is there any change in your wife after the new heart? 
<laughs> I thought if she has a new heart, that means she's going to be somebody new. It doesn't work like that. Even if you change, it doesn't work like that. Change any part, it's still the same. So that's what happened when you receive a miracle. That doesn't change you. So the, the nines, after receiving this miracle, they just went back, just catch up where they left before, and life goes on. So let me close by some spiritual application. So lost sinners must recognize their condition and the need for mercy. And then need to cry for common grace, and that's what we all do. And God's grace goes to everyone, whether you are grateful or you're not grateful. That's why you and I, we do things for people anyway, because God does it, okay? It's like the rain, the rain falls on the just and the unjust. And we know Jesus never turned away from a truly repentant sinner. In the contrary, he rebuked the hypocrite, but he drew near the brokenhearted. 90% Never thank God at all. Wow. 90. Wow. But 10% does. Can I ask you where do you fit? Where do we fit? Well. Where do we fit? Which group are we in? This man did it gladly, gloriously, willingly, and spontaneously. He wasn't asked to do it. He wasn't pushed. He just came naturally. And I can picture when he was jumping and being noisy, probably the other nine would say, what's wrong with this guy? What's, I mean, yeah, we know we're here, but what's so crazy about it? Spiritually, we are all lepers, all of us. And it seems like Jesus expects us to come back to him after he saves us. He's expecting us to come and thank and glorify him. Doesn't the Bible say we are saved by grace, yes, not by work? But we had work that we were created before. Because after we are saved, we already had work to get ready for us to do. We are not saved by works, but when you save, you have worked. That's right. And one doesn't go without the other. Amen. Now I want to close with this. Christian's gratitude. Countries like Haiti, people cannot pay for medical procedures. I mean, you die for any simple things because you cannot pay a doctor. But especially if you have a heart problem and eyes, a simple cataract, you're blind for life. So I know doctors, especially I, doctor, they will heal you for free. But they expect you to go out, bring, refer people to them. Isn't that a great deal? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. I give you the ser service for free. And then what you do, you go out and refer people. Wow. And that's how they make money. 
So Jesus is in the soul saving business. That's what he does. He gave his life to save people. And there is no greater joy than for him to see people saved, right? He made a deal with us. He said, I'm going to save you for free because you cannot pay. Mm. But the deal I make with you, you go in out and tell everybody. Amen. Everybody. Amen. And tell him I am here. I can save him too. So to test whether you are grateful or ungrateful, thankful or unthankful, oh think about if you go and tell oh anyone. My goodness. Oh my goodness. Do you let your light shine? Do you serve as a testimony, as a witness? And do you, through you, people see Jesus? They hear Jesus? To me, I feel like Christian gratitude, that's the way it sits. That's the way it sits. We should always be thinking, how can I shine for him? How can I let him be seen? How can I, I mean, to me, there is no greater way to do that. So that's what this message means, Christian gratitude. Go out, tell about him. If you cannot talk, let people see him in you without wor words. Yeah. Without words. If you only try, you will be amazed how he will do the rest. God bless you. Yeah.